Welcome back to So Grow and Cook. It's apple season and my good friends Carol and Tim have gifted us a big bag of apples from their tree. Lovely stuff. We've already made a crumble and I think a cake and a pie, at least one of each, is on the cards. But we're still going to have quite a few apples left over. So I thought I'd have a go at dehydrating some of the apples for future use. And rather than throwing the peels and the cores in the compost bin, I thought I'd have a go at making some apple jelly just using the peels and the core. Come along with me and see how I'm going to do that. So I've had this big bag of apples here, which I've washed. I've been peeling and slicing and putting in a bowl of water with a little bit of lemon juice to stop them from turning brown. When I get as many that I, as I want for the dehydrator, I'm going to take all the peels, leftover peels and cores, and I'm going to boil those up. Now, I don't know what sort of apples these are, they're a mixture of cooking and eating apples, or they might be dual purpose. The skins have got a little bit of hail damage, but the insides are perfect. There's absolutely no blemishes on the actual flesh itself. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use the cores and the peels anyway. Once you've got enough apples, Take your bowl of apples, which is soaking in lemon juice, and drain them in a colander. Oops, some of them have escaped. Good shake off, good rinse off. Towel lined tray and pat them dry. Right now, I'm going to dehydrate some of the apple slices. I've got one of these dehydrators. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. I've been calling it Luvelli, or it could be pronounced Luvel or Lovely. If anybody knows, let me know in the comment section below. Right, okay. So I've got uh, a number of trays here. Um, I've got quite a few apple slices. Now these apples are a little bit tart, so you have an option and I have an option of actually adding a little bit of cinnamon sugar or any kind of sweetener if you so wish. And I'm going to put a little bit of cinnamon sugar on my apples. So I'm gonna just sprinkle some here. The cinnamon sugar was easy to make. It's just granulated sugar um, and some powdered cinnamon. Um, I've put more, I think I put two parts of sugar to one part of cinnamon. Right, um, take your apple slices and just dip them in and lay them on your dehydrating rack. I think this is going to make the kitchen smell really lovely. Very autumnal, cinnamon, 
and apples. And I'll come back when I've done all of these. Okay, so I have got three trays of the sugar and cinnamon dusted apples for dehydration. And I'm going to switch on the dehydrator now. I'm not gonna put it on the highest heat setting, but the one just below it. So a, a medium high heat. And I'm gonna leave it for about six hours. Um, and we'll come back after that time. I can't wait for the lovely smells that are going to start coming from here. See you later. Okay, <clears throat> so I've been saving up the peels and the cores and adding them into a stock pot to simmer. You just want to put enough water to cover the fruit. And <clears throat> you want to simmer until all the peels and the cores are quite mushy. That could take, well, depending on the sort of apple you've got, it could take anywhere from 10 minutes to 25. But just keep an eye on it. As soon as it starts going mushy, then we move on to the next step. So the apple peels and cores have been simmering away in this other stock pot and they're quite mushy now. So what I'm going to do is take them off the stove and spoon them into the colander, which is lined with the cheesecloth and sitting over another stock pot. Okay, I've got my trusty stock pot ready here and I've put a colander inside it. And I'm going to line the colander with some muslin or cheesecloth. Now this is wet because I've recently washed it and I just haven't hung it out to dry. It's perfectly clean. I'm trying to do this one handed, so bear with me. We're going to line this colander and we're going to spoon all the apple peelings and cores and all the juice into it. I'm going to put all of the apples, all the peels, all the cores, all the juice into the colander with the cheesecloth and I'm going to let that drain. Be really careful, this is quite hot. Okay, don't be tempted to squeeze any of this juice, um, the peels or the core, to um, make the process speed up. Just let it do its thing. You're gonna at least need to do it for about four hours, better yet, overnight. Now, when the majority of the liquid has drained from the top here, what you can do is you can gather up the corners of your muslin and tie your bag and suspend it, maybe between, um, tied onto a, a long wooden pole, suspended between two chairs and let it continue to drain into the stock pot. That'll ensure that all the juice is going to be saved. But for right now, we'll just let it drain in the colander and we'll tie that up 
one. Quite a lot of the juice has already gone through. Another trick you can do for draining the um, apple, the cooked apples, is to tie the cheesecloth up into a bag with the apples inside and tie it onto the handle of your kitchen cupboard, which is on your just above your kitchen work surface. We don't have any of those in this house, so I'm going to have to find another way of doing it, probably suspending it between two chairs, but tied onto um, some sort of wooden stick. As I mentioned earlier, you can suspend your bag of fruit that's straining uh, from a kitchen cupboard handle. We don't have any kitchen cupboard handles in our kitchen, but we have got this shelving that we put a lot of our utensils on and I've tied up the bag on a hook and it is now suspended and draining through the colander into the saucepan. So the apple pulp has been draining um, for several hours now and I've just heated it up to speed up the um, process of it dissolving with the sugar that we're going to add. So we have got a litre. There is more. and a half. On the recipe said to use three quarter weight the, of sugar to the amount of liquid that you've got. So if I've got 1.5 liters, that's 1,500 milliliters, that would be about, oh, half of that would be 750, but we want a bit more. So I would say about a kilogram of sugar. Okay, I've recalculated that. That would be one kilogram and 125 grams. So 1.125 grams of sugar to 1.5 liters of juice. And I'm gonna use granulated sugar. Okay, so I'm gonna put the sugar in. Dissolve the sugar. You know what? I forgot to add juice of half a lemon. Okay, so the jelly has been boiling for about 20 minutes and I've got my plate which has been sitting in the freezer chilling. Now I have to take a spoonful of the jelly and see if it's reached setting point. Right, so now I'm going to pour some of the jelly onto the cold plate and see if it's reached setting point. 
Oh, it's starting to wrinkle. I think it's ready. I think it's ready to jar up. I've got a couple of sterilized jars here. I don't know how many I'm going to need, but I'll begin by filling these up. Okay, I'm going to start filling up these jars. Oh, look at that color. Beautiful. Pink. Got a little bit of scum on the surface. All right, I'm going to wash. I'm going to wipe the edges of the jars. Before I put the lids on. And just to be on the safe side, I'm going to water bath can these jars. So I've got one, two, three and a half jars of the apple core and apple peel jelly not bad for something that would have got thrown into the compost bin um now as i said earlier i'm going to water bath can these three and in order to do that you just put them in a big saucepan with um, a tea cloth at the bottom and you put the jars in and you pour hot water to cover the jars and boil them for about 10 minutes and that'll help sterilize them further and help make sure that they seal properly. This half jar, I'm not gonna bother water bath canning. I will probably just let it set and stick it in the fridge and we'll just use that straight away. It's been about six hours since we've switched on the dehydrator. I'm just going to check and see how it's doing. Okay, top layer. They're getting there, but not quite ready. I would like them drier. They're still very moist. And the layer underneath. Similar. Okay, so I have turned the dehydrator off and these look just about ready. They're dry without being crunchy. I'm gonna just put them on a plate here. They'll make, I think, really lovely snacks. And if necessary, I could rehydrate them and use them in some cooked dessert. But actually, I think they're really nice just as snacks or on mixed into porridge or granola. And I think they're dry enough to store in a jar. There's maybe one or two that I'm going to just dry a bit longer. I think they're fatter bits, but the thinner bits definitely are dry enough. And let's do a little taste test as well. Right, dehydrated apple with cinnamon and sugar. Hmm. Just need another one to check. Tasty. Not too sweet, not too tart. Just a nice hint of cinnamon. 
I think that'd be a really good snack. And finally, it's breakfast time the following morning. I'm going to try some of this apple jelly on some homemade toast. A lovely loaf of bread there. The consistency is really, it's firmed up nicely. It's not runny. It's a beautiful colour. I've put some butter on it. Oh, delicious. I think you probably won't see my facial expression, don't you? Mmm, 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 mmm. That is good. Try making some apple jelly. It's not difficult, a little bit time consuming, but it's not difficult. And I made three and a half jars with just the peels and the cores of the apples and dehydrated apples. Just another way of using up an abundance of apples if you're lucky to have it. Thank you for watching So Grow and Cook. See you next time.